Gantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Thursday and welcome to the Pagan Housewife. We're going to be talking about local exploration today. Now, a few years ago, my husband introduced me to a local park called Cave Hollow, and you have a uh, picture of that in the background there. It's this little pocket of wilderness within the city limits. It has some rather interesting uh, rock formations, and uh, you can see one of them back there. It opens up into this Almost, it almost feels like a natural amphitheater. It just has that half shell feeling. There's this natural little semicircle that surrounded it. Oh, I mean, if it wasn't prone, prone to flooding, I actually considered it as a place where my husband and I uh, might have gotten married. But the flooding issue was not very compatible with my dress. Uh, but that's not the only point of view beauty in this park. Uh, there's another section of it that's just these really tall walk, rock formations on three sides. And some of these formations actually have uh, carvings with some, and sometimes these have pagan symbols on them. And it's just a sign that, yeah, there's a, there's others of us in the area. And uh, the spot does have an atmosphere about it that does suggest that people have been there for ritual purposes from time to time, probably fairly recently. I mean, you'll even see this uh, tree stump that's at kind of the entrance of that, you know, threefold rock formation. Uh, I see people, I see, you know, little bits of candle wax have been dripped down onto it. I see people leave flowers there. I've left flower there. I've left a crystal there before. There's just something about it that apparently many local pagans are just naturally uh, drawn to. Now, it can be easy to overlook these local beauty spots and areas, you know, nearby to us that just feel special because familiarity can induce a kind of blindness. And so we have to reopen our eyes and try to look at our local surroundings, you know, freshly, almost like a stranger would be seeing it for the first time. And of course, not every locale is fortunate enough to have these naturalized parks. I know that I'm very lucky in my area, uh, but it does pay to have a look around and just see what's there. Because even an area that's, you know, less wild than this, it can still be appreciated for its beauty and magical energies. It's also an opportunity to have an outdoor area for discrete spiritual activities, you know, leaving an offering of bird seeds or wildflowers or even a crystal, like I mentioned before. That's a way of paying homage to the spirits of the place without creating a disturbance or uh, attracting perhaps unwanted attention from people who aren't familiar with our beliefs and might react um, oddly to them. And if we find the right spot, uh, we, you know, we might be fortunate enough to see that it's, you know, suitable for outdoor meditation, you know, relatively safe, as, you know, as good as place as any. And uh, that could be a place that um, we could retreat to when the occasion calls for it. And it's really quite centering to take that moment and connect with the land that we're on, especially in areas like this. It's frequently been said that the earth is sacred, but it's quite another matter to take that statement uh, to its logical conclusion, and namely to recognize that the land we are on is sacred as well. It isn't just the ancient monuments or the ground where our ancestors once uh, trod across the pond. It's where we're living as well in the here and now. And again, we just forget to take notice of what you know we're used to seeing all the time. And uh, searching for a place in the outdoors that we can return to, it can be a fun adventure, especially if, you know, let's say you live in an apartment and, you know, your apartment, it doesn't have a garden. You don't really have any outdoor space of your own. And here's a perfect excuse to get out of, you know, the apartment without, you know, having to go to work or run an errand or do something that, you know, is necessary to do in life, but, you know, isn't particularly fun. This can be a fun thing. And ideally, this should be you know, if you are successful in your search, uh, you can find a place where you can escape to, a place where you find it easy to connect. Uh, even if you're not doing any major magical workings or rituals in that space, it should uh, still have a certain atmosphere. Now, of course, any place that you return to time and again will eventually take on more of that atmosphere. But if it's already naturally there, it's a lot easier to connect and relax into those energies. So let's uh, think about it. What is your favorite kind of natural environment? 
And if there isn't a place of that kind reasonably close to where you live, what's a close second? Or is there a place you've never been to that might be worth exploring? I mean, you could be surprised where you actually find those vibes that you've been looking for. And if nothing else, I hope just thinking about this sort of thing inspires you to get out and about more often in the summer months and just enjoy the season. We all need time away from the endless screens and we need to disconnect from the noise and from the rest of the world. And with any luck, you will discover a new place that you enjoy and hopefully one that also speaks to you on the spiritual level. At any rate, it does no harm to seek it out. And if you already have places that are really conducive to your spirituality, uh, tell me all about it in the comments below or join Blackbirds Brew on Gilded. Link in the description box. And uh, come over and share your experiences and hopefully your pictures of these beauty spots there as well. We always like to ooh and all over these pretty things. So uh, don't be bashful. We'd love to hear all about it. Uh, but I think that will do it for now. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.